In today's video, optimizing your protein intake to build the most muscle. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss protein, how to use it to build the most muscle. How much do you need to take in to build muscle? And also, is it important that you time it specifically? Today's video is actually a review of an article in this month's issue of Mass. Now, Mass is the monthly application and strength sport. I'll put a link below for you to get it at a discounted rate. Now, they send it to me for free. What I really love about this is that it takes all the current literature, all the current research, and it breaks it down into articles where they discuss the methods of the research, the findings of the research, potentially what the research could lead to in the future, and it's always around things that I'm interested in. And this month's issue is no different. And this article on protein was fantastic. Now, it discusses a specific study that was done that just came out that looked at the effects of how protein was timed. Now, the protein intake was broken up differently amongst the two groups of males. In the one group, they had a small protein breakfast followed by a average protein lunch and a very large protein dinner. In the other group, the second group, they actually split the protein up very evenly. Now, what does this do? Well, it basically means that the group that got a small breakfast of protein around eight grams did not spike their muscle protein synthesis because they didn't hit their leucine threshold, which is usually somewhere around 20 grams of a quality protein source. So, although the protein was equated amongst the two groups, the group that was actually eating a large meal at night, which was around 55 grams of protein compared to the 25 grams of protein from group one, they saw some differences. Now, while they weren't necessarily statistical differences, the interesting thing that they found was the group that spaced their protein out evenly three times throughout the day, they actually had increases in every single strength measure compared to the group that was not doing that, that was eating eight grams, 25, and then 55. This is actually a pretty small amount of protein. It's actually about one to 1.25 grams per kilogram of weight. Now to tie that into something like myself at 225 pounds, that would be like me eating 100 to 130 grams of protein per day. This is pretty far below the recommended dosage for muscle hypertrophy, which I'll get into shortly. Before we discuss the strength and muscle changes, I wanna discuss the actual three types of muscle fibers there are. There is skeletal muscle, which makes up all the muscles that we like, like delts and quads and pecs and biceps, right? And then there is our cardiac muscle, and there's also smooth muscle, which is muscles in our digestive systems that are kind of involuntary. What we're focusing on here are obviously the skeletal muscles, and they put these gentlemen through a training program that was monitored. Now, although they were not in a metabolic ward, they did have some pretty strict requirements on taking photographs of their meal and taught them how to, to, uh, to track their diet. So it's a pretty good representation of their diet. Working out in an environment where the individuals were monitored certainly would help regulate and keep everything consistent so that we can see the results. So why protein? Why is protein so important? Well, protein, when we digest it, is broken down into amino acids, and those amino acids are the building blocks for muscle. When you work out, when you exercise, when you lift a weight, you are breaking down muscle fibers. Those breakdowns in muscle fibers are then repaired. Satellite cells come to the rescue. Satellite cells repair muscle damage and make it bigger. The only caveat is that you must take in more amino acids than you break down. You must be in a positive balance. The real question is just how much protein and how should we time that protein to optimize this. And though research has made a lot of headway, there is still a lot of kind of gray area amongst us. Let's put this into context. Before we worry about protein distribution, we need to take care of a few things, such as a training stimulus to induce muscle growth, our total calorie intake, and our total protein intake. If all those things are meeting the needs to build muscle, then certainly there is the possibility that protein distribution is going to matter. So what did the findings of this study kind of explain to us? Well, there may be a slight benefit to breaking your protein up into a few different meals. And there's been research done in the past on you know, small protein doses throughout the day, as small as 10 grams every hour and things like this. And what they found was that muscle protein synthesis actually has a re refractory period, meaning you can't just eat protein in large doses all day. 
because we want muscle protein synthesis to rise and fall so it can respond again. So breaking up our protein throughout the day gives us more opportunities. So there may be a possibility for as many as four or five meals per day that allow us to maximize protein synthesis. My personal feelings on this is I really like to have three or four large protein doses a day. As the article goes on to explain, the most beneficial place to be for protein intake for a day is around 1.6 grams to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So for somebody that is say 150 pounds, that would be around 110 to 150 grams of protein per day. And you can see how this would be broken up into three or four meals. It would easily be more than 20 grams per meal. For myself at 225 pounds or 102 kilograms, my protein intake would be somewhere between 165 and 225 grams of protein per day. And that's actually very close to what I hit. My target right now is 230 grams of protein, which I typically hit in three meals. Plus I might add a snack in throughout the day. I might have like some beef jerky or something to help me get my protein totals. What I like to do there is just break it up into three meals. And really what I suggest for my clients is to do the same thing. Three to four meals, five if you really wanna stretch out your eating window. Is it going to make a huge difference if you split up your protein into one meal, two meals, three meals, or four? Well, I think that's gonna come down to how much protein you're taking in per meal, and certainly I prefer to have a large bolus of protein several times a day, essentially each time I eat. I find actually increasing protein, even over the recommended needs for hypertrophy, helps with satiety and food volume, which can be very important when we're in a phase where we're trying to both put on muscle and keep body fat low. If you like this kind of information, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested in more reviews of research articles, there's a link to Mass below. I hope you guys are having an awesome Tuesday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.